This is a series of 100 films about Japanese foods that I've eaten, and this is a film about what to talk about when your conversation with a Japanese person has too long a pause in it. Every culture is different when it comes to small talk. If you're an American or Canadian, politics becomes a common denominator. In Japan, it's always safe to talk about fish. You can't go wrong with it. It's not political unless you bring up whales, or dolphins, or bluefin tuna. Onegaishimasu. This is the land of sushi because it's super important because everybody has a favorite kind of fish. They also have a favorite cartoon character. This is another thing you can talk about without upsetting anybody. Unless you talk about hentai. Onegaishimasu. I used to work as an English teacher, and I was mostly working at businesses and universities. And at the start of my time in Japan, the lessons I taught had a lot of activities. Because these activities were aimed at Japanese people, there was a lesson on fish. It was a giant two-page picture of fish in black and white, none of which I had ever heard of before, because I'm from Atlantic Canada. The Pacific Ocean, where Japan is, has different fish. This means that some of the fish we know on the Atlantic side, like halibut, are completely unknown in Japan. And Japan has different names for fish than in English. Consider the mackerel. It's a typical Atlantic Ocean fish. It also smells funny if it's been around for a few days. And I was never particularly fond of it growing up. I had this memory of it cooking on a frying pan and the whole house stank. And if you run an internet search, you'll find that mackerel has more references to being smelly than any other fish in the English language. The Atlantic is saltier than the Pacific. That's why Atlantic fish tend to smell funny. But what you may not know is that mackerel is a catch-all term for many different kinds of fish. In fact, you know that canned tuna you're eating? Well, that's actually not tuna. That is mackerel. And in Japan, there are four popular types of mackerel. So here's a list that explains this. Number four, saba. Saba is known in English as the chub mackerel. Most of the time uh, you're going to see it grilled on rice or it's going to be found canned at the grocery store. Often you will see it in sushi. Its color is a gradient of burgundy into white. Number three, aji. In English, aji is called horse mackerel. Now this is another one of those mysterious mackerel fishes I've seen at the sushi restaurant. At first I feared it, but I've grown to somewhat like it. I wouldn't say it's overwhelmingly distinctive, except it does have a very silvery coating on the back of it. Sometimes you'll see it sold split open in half and dried. And there's also aji fry, a common dish that can be picked up pre-cooked at the supermarket. Number two, hoke. Now this is where things get really good. Hoke is a staple at izakayas. In English, it's called the okost atka mackerel. I don't even know if I'm saying that right. Uh, they grill it, then add some salt and soy sauce, and then you're presented with a fish at your table for you to pick at with chopsticks. It's great, it's super easy to eat, but it does have a lot of bones, you have to be careful. However, it is a wonderfully flavorful and a great addition to when you're getting drunk. Hoke is the one worth remembering. And finally, number one, Sanma. In English, it's called the mackerel pike, or the Pacific salary. Every Japanese grocery store has it, and it's very popular as a canned fish to be served with rice, and it's often boiled with a little bit of soy sauce. You'll also see it as a pressed kind of sushi. They cut the sanma fish as a square, then roll it in a banana leaf, and it's popular as a takeout food at train stations. There are whole kiosks in department stores devoted to this kind of pressed sushi. Sanma is popular as well as salmon. So that's it for our tour of Japanese mackerel. If you want to impress people in Japan, just say that in English, you only have one word for mackerel, but in Japan they have four, and then you can go from there. You can thank me for that. The word of the day. The word of the day is onegaishimasu. It means please in Japanese, but a more accurate translation might be please and thank you or thanks so much. You say it every time you order something or ask for help from a store employee. It will make you sound infinitely more polite to Japanese ears. And it does sound a bit weird to people you know well. Mostly you use onegaishimasu with customer service staff. 
So if you want to remember this word, feel free to watch this video 10 more times and repeat along with me, or at least that's what I do. Next time. So that's it until next time when we talk about the most fancy imported food of them all and how the Japanese have done it better than the original. So until then, sayonara.